Mr. Bomba, State Secretary, Mr. Wisman, Ambassador Steiner, Ajit Gupte, and of course my dear friend Steinrake, other friends from ACMA and CM, friends from the German automotive industry. I see another friend here, former ambassador. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I think you don't need a bigger marketing expert than Steinrake here. <laughs> he first takes you up to the hundredth floor and then says, now keep flying. <laughs> Well, we have elections even in India, Ambassador, you know, very soon. So, but since I'm in Germany, I will not trouble you by speaking in Hindi. <laughs> well, these are the problems of any democracy. But there is no life without a democracy. And I think what we are today, whether it's in Germany and now we are reaching somewhere in India, it is truly on the back of being a sound and a strong, stable democracy. And I think that is true music to the ears, like your concert in Srinagar. That was music to the ears of Indians and the people all over the world, but I think it was a true sense of music for the democracy of the world, not only of India, of Germany, but of the true free world. And I think that is why we have evolved, and if India has evolved, and if we have an India Day at the auto fair here in Frankfurt, it is purely on the back of uh, India having evolved in its last 65, 66 years of independence. And we just celebrated our Independence Day a few weeks ago. And I think it has been a beautiful journey. We do make mistakes, and I'm sure every country goes through its little aberrations. We have gone through them too. And had we not gone through those aberrations, we wouldn't be selling 3 million automobiles every year, or 14 million two-wheelers, close to a million heavy vehicles a year. My friend Gupte mentioned initially and how he had to book, uh, his father booked a two-wheeler for him that when he grows up, he gives him an 18-year present. These things have certainly happened in India. We had controls, we had very regulated regimes, but all that eventually changed. Yes, we know, we acknowledge that there have been a little testing times in the recent past, some of our own making, some not of our making. A lot of you know that we have 70% of all our oil imports, global prices of oil, higher consumption levels in India. Also, one interesting fact, just for, doesn't have anything to do with the auto show, we import the largest amount of gold in the world. We don't make cars out of gold, <laughs> just for a clarification, but we Indians have a great appetite for gold. And we this year would be importing close to $70 billion worth of gold. Last year it was about $45 billion of gold. So ultimately that is translating into reserves of the country held in private hands, of course. But to say that India is poor country or India doesn't know its way forward, I think all that gold is also coming into India and is owned by Indians, private individuals. But yes, we have certainly some course correction to make. We had a downturn in the auto industry in 2008. And I think the government did some tweaking, some stimulus, and we got the industry back on track. This is again a testing time, a testing year. We had nine months of continuous uh, negative growth. Last month gave a little bit of a positive signal. 
that again the auto industry came back into the green zone or the black zone. And therefore, we feel that, I don't say the worst is over, but I certainly think that we are on a path of recovery. Well, my friend Gupta gave out some statistics, so I don't want to repeat, but even in a slowing scenario, we still happen to be the second fastest or second most growing economy in the world. That does not mean very much for us. We shouldn't pat ourselves on the back for that because we have a large population, we have a large country, we have huge aspirations of the younger <coughs> India, and we have to meet those challenges. We also have to make up for a lot of lost time because we cannot afford to, you know, just pat ourselves on the back for whatever we have achieved, <coughs> but we have that much more further to go to be able to ensure not only our rightful place under the sun, but more importantly, to give more to our own people to be able to empower them, to be able to make them stronger economically and socially. And I think, as I said, in democracies, we have challenges. We have to factor many things. There are many compulsions. There are some uh, not so very easy things to achieve, but that notwithstanding, we can't just only all the time take shelter in the fact that we are a dem democracy, therefore we have problems. We have to also find solutions to those problems. And I'm sure that some of the issues which have been mentioned here by the Ambassador, by the State Secretary, by uh, uh, Wisman, and also in my several interactions with many companies uh, who have been coming to India, who have established themselves in India, and we have to make some course correction and to make sure that we move forward meaningfully. But I'm also very happy with the fact that every German automobile manufacturer has now set up base in India. Some very substantive, some on the way to be substantive. And I think that is the right way to go. We do understand the concerns which have been voiced about the India EU FTA. But I certainly can tell you that we are not averse to going ahead with an India EU FTA. And certainly, I think our negotiators are also very well aware of the fact that global traffic and especially Indo-German and Indo-European traffic is going to be two-way. And we value the relationship with the EU, with Germany especially. I think we have the strongest relationship with Germany. We have the largest trading partnership in the entire European Union with Germany. And I'm sure that this number is, and between number one and number two, there's a huge gap. And this partnership and this strength of our partnership engagement is going to get even further stronger. So we have no denying the fact that, and we understand that this is a concern which has been voiced on, not on one occasion, but on several occasions. As yesterday, I wasn't here, but I've been told that even the Chancellor mentioned in her speech about the uh, FTA. And I can assure you that we would like to move meaningfully forward. We would like to export more. As the figures were reeled out by Mr. Wisman were saying that we export more than what we import from Germany and there is no case and there is no reason why we should not look at it that way. India initially, and I would say the resistance had been primarily because we wanted to see a strong manufacturing base emerge in our own country. And it is very important. I think nobody can deny the fact that if that is the thought process in India, to see that we have a strong manufacturing base set up in our own country, I think that would be the right way to go, politically and in every single way for the development and betterment of our own country. And that is exactly what has happened. Today, I'm very happy and very proud of the fact that automotive <laughs> manufacturing, the entire, whether it's uh, components, whether it's the OEMs, account for close to 25% of the manufacturing GDP of India. And that is good and that is very important. And this is only at the level of 3 million vehicles and 14 million two-wheelers at this moment. When we actually start consuming in the next less than 10 years, say 10 million vehicles and 30 million two-wheelers, it's going to be good for us, it's going to be good for our 
manufacturing, for creation of jobs, for uh, giving uh, economic uh, flip to the entire uh, system. So I think we have a very, very strong belief that we want manufacturing to be the mainstay of the future. Because at the end of the day, we can't be, we are not a small country. We can't be just living on goods and services and, being, and giving well-being to our people or relying on tourism as some smaller countries do. We need to have a strong end-to-end -end economy, whether it's manufacturing, whether it's services, whether it's all other uh, sides of the coin. We need to ensure that India grows equitably. And that has been one of the reasons why we have always laid emphasis on manufacturing. And I'm happy that German, European, and manufacturers from all over the world have seen merit in our argument and have now set up meaningful facilities in India. And that is something which we are very happy, we are honored, and we value this. In fact, what we have seen, the engagement and the kind of investment you come and bring in, whether Benz comes to India or BMW or Audi or Volkswagen or whichever the company, from Germany or from Europe comes to India and we discuss, we really feel very proud of the fact that people not only are coming to see profits or to see that, yes, we will do well in the marketplace, but I think this also means that there is an intention to have a stronger and a long-term engagement with India. And I can assure you that minor aberrations apart, there is still India as much as in Germany has the rule of law, has systems, Maybe sometimes a little slow, we call it sometimes the Hindu growth rate, but that doesn't matter. We can always improve on that and we will improve on that. And people who have dealt with India in the last 10, 20 years will realize that yes, what was not possible 20 years ago happened. What was not possible 10 years ago has happened and it will improve. We can learn from our mistakes. I'm not saying that we are picture perfect. We're not saying that we don't have uh, things to improve upon. But I can assure you that the intentions and the good thing about the economic agenda of the country has been that we have always maintained continuity, whichever the governments came or went. We have been in government now for nine and a half years. There was a government prior to us which also followed the same economic agenda. There was a government before that which even had some left parties in the government. They also pursued the same economic agenda. So to look at it in a longer perspective, I think India will continue to have a permanent and a long-term stable economic agenda. Well, yes, some while tweaking around of certain issues will be important. We do respect, as I said, and I come back again to the India EU FTA. We know and we acknowledge that it is an area of concern and we will, in a calibrated manner, would like to see a quick and a simple and a well-meaning resolution to this problem. I think we have already told our negotiators that this is the way to go and we must find a meeting ground between the India and the EU. So I, I can give you that kind of a, a larger understanding of the issue. Besides that, I would also like to say about the electric vehicle mobility mission, which we have launched as a national mission. I chair the mission. The Prime Minister just launched it. We have a very, very strong uh, uh, agenda and we want to see uh, the electric vehicle mobility in India a big success. As I said earlier, we import 70% of our oil from outside. We have huge uh, energy resources in form of uh, solar energy, wind energy, whichever way we can harness it. And therefore, it makes imminent sense, as uh, Secretary Bomba was just mentioning about the way forward and how do you have charging infrastructure. We are exactly uh, moving in that direction. In fact, our first pilot project for the electric vehicle, the infrastructure is being rolled out in a couple of months in New Delhi itself. And once that is in motion, I'm sure that the way forward will be quick and we want to move up very quickly in, in this direction. And I'm sure with the help and the support of all major companies here represented in this room, we will be able to achieve that. I also would like to say that uh, besides the electric vehicle mobility 
And I'm sure these are great opportunities because that's where the numbers are going to come. And that's where we are getting the entire, uh, we are putting the, uh, I would say, the package right so that companies will know exactly which is the way forward because I, we understand these are long-term investments and people want to know which is the way forward. Last time when I came here, there was a concern about diesel. People were not sure whether, you know, whether we should invest in diesel, whether there will be issues about taxation on diesel vehicles, whether they'll be taxed more, because in India, as you know, diesel is slightly cheaper than petrol, unlike the reverses in Germany or other countries. And uh, I had assured you that there will be no taxation, additional taxation on diesel vehicles, though there was a strong urge in government, you know, when to make money, the revenue, uh, they always think that, you know, this is the better way to uh, take some more taxes. But we prevailed upon the finance ministry because we knew that a lot of the OEMs were wanting to have clarity of policy to be able to make their further investments. And I assure you, we, we did make that uh, uh, announcement at, uh, and, I'm, uh, and I'm happy that we have stayed the course. And uh, we are also happy to say that on diesel, we not only recognize that diesel is a great technology, cleaner fuel, more efficient, fuel efficient, but now in India, we have also gradually gone away with the administered price mechanism, which in a couple of years, diesel and petrol prices will be market driven. And therefore, there should be no concern on that front. And on a similar note, I would like to say that on the electric vehicle mobility mission, we will come up with a clear roadmap in the next few weeks, months, which will enable you to understand clearly what is the policy, which is the direction, and how you, if you choose to, can make those investments. We have also now formed the National Automotive Board. We, earlier, we used to run it through the ministry and through our various organizations attached to the ministry. But we understand, as I said earlier, the importance of the automobile industry in, in terms of the volumes, in terms of the future, uh, the, the scale of operations. And that's why we have now formed the National Automotive Board. And that in a couple of, it's already started, but it, to get it a little bit meaningful shape, it will take another few months or a year or so. And that will then give a larger policy direction. It will formulate policies, it will uh, regulate the industry, it will give out all the norms, the emission norms, and all the other uh, aspects to the overall uh, guidance